Hello, my name is Jalen Avila, and in this 5-Minute Sono video, we are going to discuss how to identify the fetal heart rate using your bedside ultrasound. Your probe of choice for this exam is going to be the curvilinear transducer. If you can use the curvilinear, it'd be better, but you can use the phased array transducer in a pinch, and in some situations, even the linear transducer. And I'll talk about that in a bit. So the first step here is to identify that pregnancy, preferably an intrauterine pregnancy. Here's an example of an intrauterine pregnancy. We have the gestational sac. We have the fetal pole over here. This is placenta. We have some bladder over here. If you want a little bit more information on how to identify a viable intrauterine pregnancy, please check out that five minutes on a video. And in a separate video, I discuss how to identify an ectopic pregnancy. But for this, we're going to discuss how to identify just that fetal heart rate. I'm going to take a brief pause here just to let you know that all of our content is on the coreultrasound.com website. That is Ultrasound Podcast, 5 Minutes Sono, Ultrasound of the Week, Clip Bank, and we also have our courses page where we have the Core Ultrasound Fundamentals and Core Ultrasound Question Bank where you have 3,200 questions with feedback, including narrated videos explaining the question. Check it out and back to your video. Now with this, I would highly recommend using the M mode function rather than pulsed wave Doppler. Now M mode uses the exact same amount of energy as the B mode. So you're not using any more energy on that patient. First things first, identify that gestational sac with that fetal pole inside of it. Here, the practitioner zoomed in a bit just to get a good view, sweeping side by side and identifying that fetal pole right here. Next, you're going to want to hit that M mode button, move that cursor over to where you see that flickery heart, hit the M mode again, and you'll get a waveform. Now, this waveform, you can see here a repetitive kind of thing right here and right here. This is the fetal heart rate. Next, hit your calculators or calculation button. Identify the beginning of one of those heartbeats and the next of that heartbeat, and you'll get a fetal heart rate. It's that easy. This is showing a fetal heart rate of 140 beats per minute. Now, some of the machines are set up to be more of an average, which is what we're seeing over here on the right-sided image. The way that you know if you need to skip over, so here's a beat, here's a beat, here's a beat. The way that you know if you need to skip over one of them and get to the like one and three is if you see that two, that means that it wants you to skip over more of an average. And different machines with different calculators are going to be set up different ways. Now, I would suggest for all patients in which you're just assessing what is the fetal heart rate, use your M mode. And this is for very early pregnancies, as well as pregnancies of more advanced age into that third trimester. Just use that B mode if you can. Over here we see the pulsed wave Doppler. I know this is used by some practitioners and in some situations it is useful to get the actual sounds through there, but this is actually more energy and it is actually recommended to use the less energy. There's the Alara principle or as low as reasonably achievable principle, which is basically if you can get information with less energy, you should definitely do that. It's the same thing. If you can get the diagnosis via an x-ray rather than a full CT scan, you should probably get that x-ray. It's the same thing here. If you can get the fetal heart rate with the M mode, which often you very much can, get it with the M mode instead of with the higher energy pulsed wave Doppler. That's it for fetal heart rate assessment. I hope to hear from you soon and happy scanning.